Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and continue with exponentials. And let's go ahead and take a look at the algebraic side. And in particular, we want to look at how we can expand and how we can factorize. And then in addition to that, we want to also go ahead and take a look at solving exponential equations. So let's just take a look at an example here. Here, of course, is our two um, binomials that are going to be multiplied together with exponentials in them. So if we go ahead and distribute using the FOIL method, we basically have 2 to the x squared plus 3 times 2 to the x minus 1 times 2 to the x minus 3. And then after that, we can simplify this using our rules of exponents. And seeing that this is 2 to the 2 to the 2x plus 2 times by 2x, 2 to the x, and then minus 3. Now, you can have other forms of the answer as well, which would also look like this, because 2 to the second is actually 4. So this would be 4 to the x plus 2. Now this is an exponent of 1, so you could write this as x plus 1. And then minus 3. So that's another way that another form of the answer that you could have. Either one of those forms would be acceptable. Okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at 2 to the x plus 2 to the, 2 to the negative x quantity squared. Again, doing the same thing in the sense that we're foiling. And notice that what we come out with here is that this middle term is going to come out to 2 to the 0, which of course is 1. And we come out with a value of 2. Now, this of course is not going to be simplified. And the reason why is because we have a negative exponent there. So we have to do one more step. And we need to say 2 to the 2x plus 2 plus this would be 1 over 2 to the 2x. Now, of course, in the same respect as with this one here, if you wanted to, you could actually go ahead and change this as 4 to the x plus 2 plus 1 over 4 to the x. Okay? Either one of those two would be probably would be acceptable. Uh, and it's going to be important for you to be able to see both of those and how those are equivalent expressions. Okay? Now, we want to go ahead and just take a look at one more example with regards to expansion and factorization. Let's go ahead and take a look at this exact same problem. So call that C. And let's hit raise it to the negative 2 power instead. So this is 2 to the x plus 2 to the negative x raised to the negative 2 power. Now, we've already just done this. So if we actually go ahead and just change this so that it looks like this, we can use the result from the previous example to go ahead and determine what this will be. So this actually becomes 1 divided by, uh, this is 4 to the x plus 2, uh, plus 4, oops, sorry, plus 1 over 4 to the x. Now this fraction all of a sudden is a complex fraction because you have a fraction with any fraction. So we need to go ahead and simplify this by multiplying by a factor which will eliminate the complexity of the fraction. Now, in order to do that, we have to actually look at the fractions within the fraction and think about the lowest common denominator. And we need to multiply that to both the numerator and the denominator of the bigger fraction. So, of course, the only, the least common denominator, or the least common multiple, I should say, that we want to go ahead and multiply this, multiply to this is 4 to the x divided by 4 to the x. And notice that if we do that, then what we come up with is just going to be 4 to the x divided by, that's going to be 4 to the x quantity squared plus 2 times by 4 to the x plus 1. Okay, now, of course, you can go ahead and still continue to simplify, and there's a couple of things that we could do to this, and all of these ways are actually going to be valid. So you could actually go ahead and change everything so that it's base 2. So this is going to be 2 to the 2x. This is going to be 2 to the 2x, so that's going to be 2 to the 4x. Okay, plus, this is going to be 2 to the x, uh, 2x plus 1. And then plus 1. So you could have it looking like that as well. Okay, So that would be your most simplified form. Of course, if you wanted to go ahead and change this, so that's 16 raised to the x power. You could do that, and then you would have to leave that as 2 to the 2x plus 1. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and move on. And let's take a look at solving exponential equations. Now, when it comes to solving exponential equations, there's basically one thing that you need to remember about that. 
and it's very nice and simple. It says that if you have a base equaling another base, and the exponents are different, if these two bases are the same, in order for this whole equation to be equal, the exponents must be equal as well. So if we have something that looks like this, the logical conclusion is that the heart exponent has to be equal to the star exponent. And that's the only way that you're going to come up with a quote. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of examples of this. Say, for example, we have uh, 3 to the x plus 2 is equal to 1 over 27. Now, of course, the most important thing is to think, okay, we want to make sure that we get the same base, and hopefully everybody can see the common base, which would be 3 in this case. So we get 3 to the x plus 2 is equal to 3 to the negative 3. Now, notice this is the exact same situation that we have where the bases are now the same. Now, in order for this to be equal, the exponents have to be the same. So we know then that x plus 2 has to be equal to negative 3, and then we can say that x has to be negative 5. Okay. So let's take a look at another example here of b, and this says 4 times 5 one third raised to the x plus 5 is equal to 41. Now, of course, this one is a little bit more complicated, but the idea, especially with mathematics, is that you want to try to simplify it to a more equi a simplified equivalent version of this equation. And there's things that we could do to make it more simple. So, for example, we could go, go ahead and subtract the 5 from both sides. So we get 4 times the by 1 third raised to the x is equal to 36. Divide every side and everything by 4, and we come up with 9. And notice that once you get up to this point, you basically simplify a more complex looking equation to a simple one that you've already done before. So after that, it should just fold naturally. So you got 3 to the negative x is equal to 3 squared. So that means, therefore, that negative x has to be equal to 2. And that means that x has to be equal to negative 2. Okay, so there you go. That's how you go ahead and take a look at solving exponential equations by making sure that you can go for a common base and then equating the exponent because that's the only way that the equation will actually be equal. Now, with regards to algebraic expansions and factorization, of course, it's going to be making sure that you apply your rules of algebra as well as your rules of exponentials properly in order to simplify, expand, or even factorize. Okay, so let's see how you do. We'll talk about them in the next class. Okay, see you later.